How's it going guys? It's Dan from Actiles. So I said I'd do a video earlier on in the week on my tank at home. Um, so, and the reasons as to why I chose to escape it the way that I have done. So this is my tank, it's around five, 600 litres, it's got a 200 litre sump, and it's extremely low tech. We're using an Aquascale, an Aquasky uh, 2.0 light. There's nothing amazing, it's only a three foot light, so it doesn't even go the full width of the tank. Um, I did that for a reason, that's purely to show that low light plants can survive in low light, basically. So, plants full of, uh, the tank itself is full of angel fish and you know, cardinal tetras, they're probably my two favourite, so that's why I chose them. Um, so, let's talk about the tank itself. It's got white pebble at the bottom, three to five mil roughly. It's also mixed in with siege and fluorite red. It's a clay blade substrate. Um, you can mix it with gravel, which is the beauty of it. So the bulk of this tank, guys, is actually gravel and not sechum fluorite. So that's what makes this even more low-tech, is you've not got the nutrients really drawing in through. Um, now, I will get away with this because the tank's been here for years. Um, it's got lots of nutrients in the bottom from all the you know the, the fish, fish poo and stuff. So... You've got to consider that new tanks if it's a brand new tank and you're keeping plants and you're using gravel you need to think about dosing with fertilizers okay guys or root tab something like that so the plants that i've used so spiderwood's what's in the middle that's the type of wood i like it which is why i used it no other reason java fern itself is this one here that i've attached to now i've attached that literally with cotton thread um, it's a rhizome plant. Now, what that means at the bottom of the leaves, you'll see what looks like a bar. The leaves will come off that bar and the roots will be underneath it. All I did was cotton thread, wrap around the rhizome, stuck it to the wood, tied it up. Simple. That's all we did. Anubius works in exactly the same way, so Anubius species is exactly the same way. To cut them plants and to propagate them, snip the rhizome, make two, plant it, it will grow new leaves, runners off the rhizome. So that's the java fern covered. This here is hydrophilia, angustifolia, and I've got coriombosa at the back. Now they're a stem plant, guys, okay? So what that means is you have a stem, roots at the bottom of the stem, the roots go through the middle of the stem, which is important. If you want to replant it, you cut the stem and plant it, and it will grow new leaves, and there you go, as easy as that. One thing to see about this plant, though, guys, is it does like its light, which is why it's in the center so it gets its light but it's also not prone for getting algae on it so because of the broad leaves a simple thing to do with this guy is just give it a little bit of a brush okay give it a brush with your fingers and wipe the algae off every now and then and that will resolve that problem here is cryptocorn leucins so if you can actually see that now they're a one of my favorite they're a low light plant um, very very easy to keep from my experience so with them just plant them guys they won't grow very tall but they really are nice easy to keep give the leaves a wipe from time to time again stem plant so snip replant as easy as that so that's sort of them as a whole um, the only other plants i've got here is ambulia which yeah you all know is one of my favorites i mean it just grows and grows and grows now i haven't planted it yet reason for that is um when they come, they can sometimes be curled up through postage. So I like to wait until they've got a little bit of root. So I drop them in, I let them uncurl and grow. And then once I get the height that I want, I can actually see where do I want to place this plant. Well, I want to be at the back somewhere. So once it's right height, I can move it. And then when I plant it, I can leave it. Like, that's an important thing to remember. You don't want to be planting your, your plants and then moving them every five minutes. You know, use the lead weight that's on them, drop them in, move them about. Ah, I want that to be there, plant it. But don't move it once you've planted it, because you're just going to destroy the plant. So that is that. Um, the only other plant in the back here is, right at the back, I've got Jungle Val, so it's a fellas near with a Gigantia. Um, oh, it's just awesome. Extremely easy to keep. Oh, the little, at the bottom of the actual leaf itself you'll see what looks like a white bulb almost like an onion if you peel the layers off 
make sure you've got a little, they call it a crown, make sure you, you leave a little bit of that above the substrate. It will grow a runner and then another shoot up through your leaves. Doesn't need a lot of light, really easy to keep. Another really good one um, for sort of beginners guys is the Valisneria Guidance here. Um, it can melt, so beware of that. When you first introduce it, depending on where it's come from, you may find it will melt. Don't panic, let it melt back, it will regrow. So that's an important fact to remember. Um, some of the questions that were asked was, why did I choose to put a, a, a ship in an aquascape? Uh, quite simple, really. I wanted to be different. I don't believe that everything needs to be normal rocks and slate and you know lava rocks. Yeah, they're great, they look awesome, but why not do something different? Most people, from my opinion, that have aquariums in their tanks, uh, in their houses, sorry, um, have some form of ornaments. Well, just because you want to change to a planting tank don't mean you need to throw them away. Get your plants and reposition it and work out and you know work out how it will look good or how you like it. You're the one with it in your house every day. You're the one looking at it. It doesn't matter if it's conventional and you know if it's the best scape in the world. Who cares? As long as you like it and you can keep them alive, it's all that matters because you're the one there looking at it every single day. Um, the other thing that I do do with this, guys, another plant that I did add was um, the one two grow range from Tropica. I added. Um, this plant here, uh, Storagani repens, or however you say it. Um, now, the plant itself is extremely healthy, but I didn't like the mechanics of how it come in the pot. Um, it was quite sort of difficult to split up into sections. It wasn't great plant and it kept coming up. Um, yes, there are ways you can improve that and that's not a problem if you know how, they, how to do that. Um, but for those that, as I said, this is the idea of this is for a low, a low, um, a beginner. That's the idea why I've done this video. So I wouldn't recommend it, from my opinion, a beginner getting a tropical one two grow range because they are more difficult to plant than your average leaded bunches and your potted plants purely because of the size. They're quite fiddly. They're quite small. Um, so just bear that in mind. That's really important, I think. Um, but apart from that, it is, it is pretty awesome. The plant itself is so healthy. Uh, and I'm hoping they'll grow well. They're another low light plant. They don't need um, much to be fair. Another Easy Care plant. It's actually labelled with Easy Care on Tropica as well, which is um, another thing you can look out for if you are buying Tropica plants. Now, only thing I do with this, guys. Oh, that's Flappy. <laughs> um, so, right, guys, he's. People might say he's got something wrong with me. Probably has. I bought him like it. I've had him for five years from literally a 50 pence size. He can't swim very well, he just flaps. So he got the nickname Flappy, but I um, he's happy, he's living. That's the main thing, so I'll let him live his life out in there. Um, fertilizers, what do I use? Aquadip plant food, that's what I use. Um, I've used a lot, to be fair. I've used CN, uh, TNC Complete. I've used Tropical Nutrition. Um, I've used uh, Seachums um, Flourish. Um, why do I use Aqua Dip? Uh, it's consistent, really consistent. Every single bottle I buy, I get results from. So that's why I stuck with it. Um, it's the plant food, the one I just showed you, is the overall one. It's what they call their um, all-rounder. It's full of sort of iron, potassium, magnesium, and lots of other macronutrients that the plants will use to grow. Um, you can just use that if you want on its own. I don't, I like to add a little bit more with it. So I also add the Ferro. It's the only other one I add um, that's technically a macronutrient, it's iron. Um, it's used, iron, from my experience, I like a lot of iron, is purely because it helps bring out the colors and the, the depth of the color in, in the leaves. Um, the greens are a lot greener. The reds, in my opinion, are a lot sort of deeper go a lot further rather than being like a, a fadey colour, they're really strong. So that's why I dose with Ferro. The only other one that I add that not a lot of people would need to, but I do because my tank's so big and the water absorbs a lot of um, nitrates and nitros and whatever, is the Aquadip Nitro. It's just literally nitrogen. Um, so nitrogen is used um, for a plant to make proteins and the proteins are then developed for them to grow healthy. Um, most nitrites and nitrates um, will come from fish poo and leftover food that sits in the bottom of your gravel. Um, as I said, the reason I 
dose it is because I can't remember the last time that I had nitrites eat anywhere near 10 at all. Like, they read zero, no matter what I do with this. Such a large volume of water, plus the sump at the bottom. Yeah, it's just touch wood, it's been perfect. So that's why I dosed the extra with that. Um, now, with this type of fertiliser, they absorb it through the leaves because it's a water column based. Um, all the all the nutrients from these are absorbed through the leaves. You can get root tabs, which you can put in your soil. Um, I don't use them. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a big fan of them. They do have their place and they do work very well. But like I said, you know, easy care plants like this, no, I wouldn't bother. I don't really feel the need to. Um, so that's something obviously you can make your own judgment up on. The rock I used is slate. Why? I like it. That's really the only reason. The other one I actually really like, which I'm going to do next, is the uh, lava rock. I do really like that. That's pretty awesome. So I will give that a try. But apart from that, guys, I think I've kind of covered covered everything, really. I don't really think there's much more I need to I need to go through. I think that's it, yeah. So if you do have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to go through it. But yeah, so big ship, lovely bit of wood, big rocks, gravel, easy care plants, and you can do something like that. Um, so yeah, any questions, let us know, guys. Take care. Bye-bye now.